Hi, welcome to Lessons with Laura. I'm Laura Ingalls Gunn. This week we'll be taking a look at Farmer Boy, which was written by Laura Ingalls Wilder and published in 1933. The first chapter that we're going to read from is titled Winter Evening. The dining room was pretty. There were green stripes and rows of tiny red flowers on the chocolate brown wallpaper. And mother had woven the rag carpet to match. She had dyed the rags green and chocolate brown and woven them in stripes with a tiny stripe of red and white rags twisted together between them. The tall corner cupboards were full of fascinating things. Seashells and petrified wood and curious rocks and books. And over the center table hung an air castle. Alice had made it of clean yellow wheat straws set together airily with bits of bright colored cloth at the corners. It swayed and quivered in the slightest breath of air and the lamplight ran gleaming along the golden straws. But to Almanzo the most beautiful sight was his mother bringing in the big willowware platter full of sizzling ham. Mother was short and plump and pretty. Her eyes were blue and her brown hair was like a bird's smooth wings. A row of little red buttons ran down the front of her dress of wine-colored wool from her flat white linen collar to the white apron tied round her waist. Her big sleeves hung like large red bells at either end of the blue platter. She came through the doorway with a little pause and a tug because her hoop skirts were wider than the door. So from that passage, we're actually going to make an air castle this week. But first, let's look at some of the clothing. Do you think that skirts were wide enough that they couldn't fit through the doors? Let's go see. To help us establish the fashion timeline for Farmer Boy, we look at that Almanza Wilder was born in 1857, and one of the chapters in the book is titled Birthday, in which he turns nine years old. So armed with those two facts, we can generalize that the story is set in 1866 and the fashions for that time period were still very much the Romantic era in which women had very full skirts that were supported either by numerous petticoats or hoop skirts worn underneath and uh, sleeves were often bell-shaped so the descriptions of what Angelina Wilder was wearing in Farmer Boy were historically accurate. This is a dress I had made a few years ago and it is from that era. It features the bell sleeves, a white collar um, that was mentioned in the dining room story as well as the white cuffs. And we had talked about last week why women would wear separate collars and cuffs. So I'm going to take the camera off of the stand right now and we'll take a look if indeed the skirts were bigger than the doorways. 
Now one thing we should consider is that in modern houses um, there is a standard size for doorways and that is 36 inches wide. But if you've ever visited an older house, um, they did not have standard sizing and doorways could actually often be much more narrow than our modern 36 inches. So even using modern standards, let's take a look if the skirts are indeed wider than the doorway. Normally in the historic fashion corner, I have this doorway hidden with a decorative board, but I wanted to show you this is a standard modern 36 inch doorway and you can clearly see that the skirts of the era in which Farmer Boy was written, um, they do extend beyond the doorway. And having worn this garment myself, I can attest that you tug and pull to get through doorways in addition to knocking over small children and dogs purely by accident, I promise you. So a closer look at the bell sleeves. They were quite large and you definitely could get them dipped in gravy, um, which was a good idea to have the cuffs. And the daytime bodice would be high up upon the neck and the basque waistline would fit very tightly before extending out into the full skirts. And this gave the illusion of a very small waist. This particular ensemble has three petticoats underneath it to give the support that the big skirt needed. Now this particular um, garment is made out of wool and so it is quite warm and heavy, which is why I'm not wearing it in the video because it's still quite warm here in Texas. And it is a double closing system. Oop, I'm a little bit too close. We have frogs, but then if you separate, there's also hook and eyes underneath and everything is lined and boned and there is one of the cameos that I spoke about last week. It's a very striking outfit to wear, and I enjoyed making it. Our next reading for this week comes from a chapter titled Filling the Ice House. They worked so hard that the exercise kept them warm. But long before noon, Almanzo was hungrier than wolves. He couldn't stop work long enough to run into the house for a donut. All of his middle was hollow, with a gnawing inside of it. He knelt on the ice, pushing sawdust into the cracks with his mittened hands and pounding it down with a stick as fast as he could. And he asked Royal, what would you like best to eat? They talked about spare ribs and turkey with dressing and baked beans and crackling cornbread and other good things. But Amonzo said, that what he liked most in the world was fried apples and onions. When at last they went in to dinner, there on the table was a big dish of them. Mother knew what he liked best and she had cooked it for him. Almanzo ate four large helpings of apples and onions fried together. Although I had had fried apples before, I'd never tried apples and onions. 
And so I wanted to give Almanzo's favorite dish a try this week. So let's get started on the recipe in the Storybook Cottage Kitchen. This week's recipe from Farmer Boy was Almanzo's favorite dish to eat, apples and onions. Now, while I've had spiced apples, I have never thought to pair apples with onions. So I am eager to get this recipe started and try it out to see if it's as good as he says it is. To make this is fairly simple. You need one onion and you'll slice it into rings. I opted for a yellow onion because they're a little bit sweeter. Um, then you'll need three apples. I went ahead and peeled my apples and then sliced them into thin slices. In a Pioneer kitchen, you wouldn't waste anything. So your apple cores can be used to make apple cider vinegar, which of course is what we used to make the pie in last week's episode. To fry this all up, you'll need about a quarter of a pound of bacon. Now, for this recipe, I wanted to try and get it as close to how it would have tasted um, in the 1860s, and so I did select organic um, fruits and root vegetables, and I purchased the bacon from a local butcher. It was nitrate free, so it's somewhat similar to the type of bacon that they would have had. And then just two tablespoons of brown sugar um, to bring out the sweetness, I would imagine. So the recipe is pulled from the Laura Ingalls Wilder Companion, and everything is gonna go in this big pot and slowly cooked until it is caramelized. So let's get started. Let's head into the kitchen and check on the apples and onions. We'll take a quick detour. This is this week's tablescape done in blue and white and gold. I love mums because I can get a full two weeks out of my centerpiece. It's in an antique confit pot that I found in France. So I can hear the apples and onions sizzling. Let's see if we can get a shot without the camera fogging up. Oh, they're getting beautifully caramelized. The bacon smells delicious. And in the oven to go with it, I'm cooking some Brussels sprouts and pork tenderloin. I'll show you when it's all finished. In Chapter 2 of Farmer Boy, Almanzo is describing the dining room in his childhood farmhouse, and over the dining table hung an air castle that had been made by his sister Alice. And I was never quite sure what an air castle was. It sounded very beautiful and romantic, and I learned that it is a traditional Scandinavian craft called himmeli, and it is made with wheat straw. You most often see the designs at Christmas time. They use them as wreaths and Christmas ornaments, but they can be used year-round. Now, on a twist, we're going to create some air castles with drinking straws. And here is a small design that I had made that you could hang on a Christmas tree. And then this is a larger design that you can hang from the ceiling or the wall. So you will want some twine as well as some scissors. And then you'll need three drinking straws that are eight inches or 20 centimeters long, and
and three straws that are four inches or 10 centimeters long. Now, the thin twine threads easily through the straws even easier is if you get a basting needle or a knitting needle and even in the children's craft area they have blunt ended needles so that is an option you don't have to have it i'm now going to arrange the camera so it's just going to be looking at my hands so you can see how the design is made We have about two arm lengths or two yards of twine and we're first going to start with the smaller pieces of straw that we have cut. And it's very simple. You're just going to thread the twine through the straw, all three pieces in a row and you'll pull them close together and then once you have all three pieces threaded you're going to make a triangular shape and then once it is in this position you're going to knot the three pieces of straw tightly together. So it'll look like this. Now, with the longer piece of twine, you're now going to add the longer pieces of straw. There's our gray sparking as usual. So we have that. And then a second piece. So you've threaded two of the long straw pieces. And they create another triangle. And you're going to take the corner end and attach the triangle to the other base. So here's the base, here's the other two pieces. I'm going to pull it tight so that then we have something that looks like this. Okay. Now, you're going to take the thread and bring it back through to the end of the smaller triangle. Did you see how I did that? I just threaded it through because this is where your last piece of twine is going to go. So then you have a long triangle, a small triangle, and then this other single long straw piece. And then the magic is you lift them up, and then so you have your end that you now need to knot the string tightly. Like this, see how it brings it up? So tightly, tightly, you want it joined all together. So pull as tightly as you can, and then knot that piece. And if you want to be double secure, you can knot it again. It's up to you. 
I like to add a second knot since this is going to be the string that holds the hanging element. Okay, so now we have this short string and we can trim that off. We don't need it. And then this long string becomes the piece that you're going to hang your design from. So next I'll show you how it turned out. Here is the finished air castle. I think it turned out great. I love the small version too. My daughter wants to hang this design in her bedroom, which I think will be a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this week's lessons with Laura, Farmer Boy Edition. Next week we'll be taking a look at Little House on the Prairie. So I hope you'll join me. Hit the subscribe button or leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments down below. Additional links are located in the description area. Have a wonderful day. Today we're going to be looking at Farmer Boy, written by Laura Ingalls Wilder and published in 1930. <laughs> in the oven, we have some Brussels. Oh, it's steamed up. Goodness sakes.